today's show we're going to explore barrel aged beer and we're going to discover French food, French food made in street markets. We often think of street food as being Asian food, but here we've got French food, which is street food. And you've got this wonderful little shop. The guy makes all the food here by himself in the street here. And the pricing is absolutely incredible compared to some of the other French shops. I do uh, like um, uh, almond chocolate, almond cake, uh, lemon pie, uh, chocolate like very soft inside. The cream of uh, lemon. And this is made from fresh lemon juice and yes. cream? Yes, fresh lemon juice, cream and uh, a lot of butter. Wow, this is good. This is so lemony, it's got, it's so strong. So you put that wonderful mixture into the, the tart case and yes. now... This is like a... Uh, it's like mousse. Mousse of uh, lemon. This is his vegetable tart, and the pastry is just so rich, so incredible. The vegetables just, just gently cooked, so they're not too overcooked. And the taste is, it's so juicy, politely seasoned. Beautiful flavour. Just these lovely fresh vegetables, wonderful pastry, and this lovely sort of creamy sauce. I mean, this is real French food, and look, it's right here in the middle of Taipei. Wonderful. You need to go to France, it's here. Today, we are in German's Dead's Pub. Why are we here today? Because last year, our producer, Mr. Martin, went to Ilan to see the cask beer, how they made it from. Barrel aging beer is, is one of, the, it's one of the, the biggest trends going on in, in the States right now. Um, so um, we just thought, you know, it'd be a good idea. We could do that, um, get some barrels in and uh, brew some interesting beers with it uh, because um, the idea is to use uh, uh, let the beer uh, sit in these. Um, these are usually spirit barrels, so they could soak up some of the flavor of the of the spirit. They could get some of the flavor of the of the oak, and they could also um, uh, just generally mellow out a bit. Because most of the beers we put in these barrels are, you know, 10, 15 percent ABV. These barrels, these are um, these are all uh, bourbon or American whiskey barrels. Um, some of these are. Uh, bourbon, some of these are rye whiskey. 
For a lot of the barrel-aged beers, um, they would have a very unique flavor to them just because um, it soaks up different kinds, the flavor of the spirit and the, the wood flavor into it. So, and aging definitely helps. We've been doing, the, doing it for, I think, two, almost two years now. And um, we, we constantly come up with uh, different and new ones. For us, it's, it's just um, looking, searching out. And, um, and I think that, that, that's the part, what I was talking about, that um, for the brewers, it's not just the industry, the professional, the scientific side of being a brewer, but also um, the creative, the, the, the expressive, the, the way that, you know, you can try things and be innovative and, you know, and, and be bold about flavors. And I think that's, I think it resonates very well with our, with our fans too, so. The good thing about these beers is they age very well. You could, uh, most beers you want to drink fresh, but for these beers, you put it in a bottle and you store it somewhere cold, um, um, some of our, uh, first our first batch of uh, barrel-aged beer, um, a, I think a couple days ago we just had it and it's, it's been sitting in a bottle for maybe two years now. And it tastes even better than, than originally because I think in a bottle um, all the flavors blend and it settles out, all the flavor settles out. So it's, it's a lot cleaner and uh, the, 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 the flavor is a lot straightforward than um, when it's fresh out of the, the, the barrel, it's, the flavors haven't really settled down yet, I think. It's more. These beers are all very high alcohol. These are like, you know, 12%, but very, very dis uh, delicious. This one is the bourbon barrel aged red ale. And this one, I think it's much special because it's hard to brew the, this kind of beer. And we brew the red ale beers and just put in the barrel. And I think and we need to put uh, over half year or maybe even one year to make sure the bourbon aroma and the bourbon flavor will get inside with the beers. Wow, wonderful. You can taste like whiskey in the cars. Tastes like a bourbon way, but actually with the beer. And also it's uh, very formally. Last time we went had a Guinness but this is strong. Make sure you're ready for this. This is double stronger than the Guinness. This wonderful beer, I think I got some idea for the recipe. Cook some dish with that. Hold on, let's see. Today, I'm going to cook some amazing chicken dish with wonderful beer. We're going to have some ingredients for later on today. The chicken dish. Right, producer, we have some chicken breast fillet. Actually, we did already. And some kale sliced, and onion, and some butter. And of course, we have some beer. All right, turn over. You know, actually, the people, they don't eat chicken breast in Taiwan very much. You know why? Because they think it's uh, too dry. I know enough flavor. That's why drumstick chicken is very popular in Taiwan. Some rosemary. My favorite, oregano. I was in Greece for a couple of years, right? Oregano for me is a good recipe. You can't get the fresh one in Taiwan, but uh, you're going to use the dry one. Put some oil in, add on some butter, an onion to melt. Wow, look this, smell it. Very important, we're going to caramelize the onion in the beginning. When you're cooking, the caramelized onion is a very important part, right? And uh, make sure you caramelize the onion. I'm trying to say it, when you caramelize it, the sugars from the onion come out and you get that lovely sweet taste. Something that doesn't happen much in Taiwan. Okay, Chef? Yes, thank you very much. Sorry, the audience. When you have to drink the beer with the whiskey cask, you know, a little bit dizzy, but uh, that's the part of life, isn't it? Yeah. When the onion almost caramelized, put the chicken breast fillet into the pan. Look, we hear the 
teaching coming in the world. All right. When you see the chicken breast getting wet part, the almost ready to turn, but uh, make sure don't turn too much. Look this. Look this. So now I'm going to put some uh, bourbon cask beer. You put the beer in. All right, make sure you cover all the chicken. Turn the head on. You add in sliced carrots. Lit on. Cook two minutes. Okay, so I have two guests to try the raw carrots and the chicken breast. Normally people in Taiwan, they don't eat chicken breast that much. And also the carrots. Chicken breast is too dry. Yeah. And compared with chicken, we can eat something else. The meat, like the beef, is much, much wet compared with chicken breast. So I think the most Taiwanese don't like the chicken breast. And even the carrot, because the carrot you can taste the, the raw aroma inside it. So I'm really interested about you just add these two, two things. We don't like, Taiwanese don't like things together and it smells very good. No, I, I, I really like it because it's very wet. The chicken breast is very wet and, and I, I know the chef at the, our brew. Uh, our beer inside it, and it's it's just it, you you don't taste the alcohol aroma or taste inside it, but it's very good. Have you ever cooked with your beer before? Not really, because because I think it's the alcohol. I'm not sure Taiwanese will accept the alcohol aroma in the in the in the food, but I think it's really good. Wow. We celebrate today the, the day of the, of the Bastille in France. Uh, and uh, we have, as a French, here in this small market, very important to have food. Food is very important for French. I think there is something very interesting between France and Taiwan. Uh, it's all about pleasure and it's all about food. Taiwanese love food. Just if you come to Taiwan, you see the number of restaurants you have, the diversity of the food in Taiwan is incredible. It's not because uh, Taiwan is a special place, but Taiwan is a uh, uh, from 50 years ago till now, you have a lot of, of course, the, the history of uh, Taiwan, Taiwan food, you know, from uh, 200 years ago, a lot linked to the, to the sea, because, uh, because the sea is the most important here, so we have a lot of uh, seafood. But also, all those people in uh, the 1950s who come from all the parts of Taiwan, of, of China, and came in Taiwan, and some people... Uh, coming from those very uh, lot of different regions in China, create, recreate in Taiwan the cuisine of their own region. So you have really in Taiwan what we call a diversity of food, especially Chinese food, all kind of Chinese food here you can find. And French is a little bit the same. France is a country which we are a very good location in the world. Uh, we are on the 45 parallel, just where the climate is very temperate. We have two seas. Uh, we have the Atlantic on one side, big Atlantic, and we have another one which is Mediterranean. So for seafood, we have two different seafood, totally different. Also, in France, we have 400 different landscapes. We have very old uh, mountains, very uh, new mountains. We have a sea border, very different, some with 
a green, a, a, a blonde sound, or with grey sound. We have 400 different landscapes. And we have f uh, four seasons. The winter, the August, uh, the, um, um, the winter, the, uh, the spring, the summer. They are three months very different. So we have a huge diversity in France of veggies. We have a huge diversity of different meats, you know. And we have a huge diversity of fishes. So the French food is good because of the diversity of the, uh, the, the sources. So that's what makes the French food so special. It's not the French food is very good because the French people are very smart. It's really because the resources we find in France are very, very, very multiple. It's a little bit the same with Chinese food. Okay, merci. Merci beaucoup. This is great. This is, uh, first, it's a French beer. Uh, the, uh, the brand is called uh, Cronenbourg. It's come uh, from Alsace. It's, uh, it's, I, I, my family comes from Alsace, so today I'm very, how to say, emotive to drink this beer in Taiwan, a beer will come from Alsace. And uh, the, brand, the brand of this beer is called uh, six, six, 1664. It's an, 1664 is the date of the creation of this brasserie in, uh, in Alsace. And Alsace, you know, is very close to Germany. So Alsace and Germany, uh, because of the history, they have a lot of cultural similarities. And beer, of course, a good beer, the only good beer made in France, we can compete with a German beer, is a beer from Alsace. And this is a blanc. Blanc in French means white. white. So it's a white beer. It's a white beer. And quite famous in Taiwan, a lot of ladies like it. Yes, huh? that's true. You like it? I like it. Because oh, you love it. I, I don't love it. <laughs> but I like it. It's, the only, it's one of the only beers I drink too. Because I don't really like beer. Okay. But then this one, it doesn't taste that strong. And so I quite like it. Yeah, it's very important to uh, say that all, a lot of ladies like this beer. This is more fine, you know, more. So let me try it. First thing, the, it's very fresh, very good. And uh, it's very, how to say, I will explain this. Uh, it's very floral. You look like to have, you know, flowers in your mouth. And, and the intensity is still there. You know, I just drink one drop and I can feel all mouth, you know, is by flowers, you know. It's not too uh, bitter. And very important, because Taiwanese, they don't like too much bitter. And uh, it's soft, very soft, and uh, it's very, it's not sweet, a little bit soft, you know, but very nice. And you stay in mouth, and you feel uh, very shufu. how you say in, in English? Comfortable. Uh, very comfortable. Santé. <laughs> Santé means, Cheng Kong means health. Santé. So France, you can, very simple, because very simple time, we can div divide France in two parts. We say the north part and the south part. The base of the food in the north part is butter. We say in France there is, in French food, there is three very important ingredients. The number one ingredient is butter. The number two ingredient is butter. And the third is I let you get butter. So butter is very important. So this is the north of France. South of France is different. It's all about oil. It's olive oil or all kind of oil. So you have really a big diversity. So the base of the, of the oil or butter for the, uh, for the food with the diversity of the uh, resources, veggies, fish, meat, fruit, all the season makes that the French food as a real, real people have been studying about how to to make the French food very flavor. And what is a very difficult in French food is not to cook, is but to make the sauce. 
the sauce is the most important. That's what gives more to the flavor. The sauce is very important. So how you make the sauce, and when you study French food, one of the big parts is all about the sauces, different sauces. The sauce going with the fish, so that is very important. On the other side, the Chinese food has the same diversity as the French food. Because of the season, because China is very big, because they have a different tradition in all the, the region. So with French food and Chinese food, we don't speak about cuisine. We say it's gastronomy. Gastronomy is more than cuisine. It's, it's an art, an art, an art, uh, art of life. It's a way, you know, how to enjoy the food, how to make the food. It's really something very special. And that makes the French food and the Chinese food on the same level. They are totally different, but they are on the same level of pleasure. Now we are going to try something, a special dish, which is from east of France. And if you remember, the east of France, north east of France, will all use a lot of butter, okay? And this one is called quiche. And this, this is a more aperitif uh, dish, something we have for before to have the main, main courses. We have what we call a quiche. Quiche is very simple. It's made from a pastry, a past, you know? So past is butter with the flowers, with eggs, and what we call a pâte brisée. And when we make this pâte brisée, after we have to make, inside the quiche, we have to make what we call the appareil. And the appareil is made with fresh cream. Fresh cream is very important. It comes from milk, it's different from butter, but the fresh cream is what gives a very, what we call savory savory taste in the mouth is fresh cream. French people love fresh cream. For example, we use it for, for, uh, for, for, for um, soup. For example, the uh, uh, nangua, nangua tang, nangua, popkin. The popkin soup with fresh cream is crazy. It makes you so good. So then, after that, we have what we have? We have onion, we have bacon, bacon, okay? And we have some eggs also, and no, then yes, yeah, finish. That's right. But we can. Some people they add cheese, oh, yeah, yeah. but the people from Lorraine they say no cheese. So it's very good for health, and this is exactly what the French people they like for aperitif. Just before we go to a, a large dinner, you know, to put in appetizer, we have this. Uh, uh, quiche Lorraine. It could be with some salad. It's very good also with some salad. It's matched very well. You have, you know, this savory taste plus the crunchy of the salad. It's very nice. Mm. It's nice. Very nice. Okay. Bon appétit. So now we are going to taste wine. You know, wine is really part of the French culture. It's just like tea in Taiwan. Tea is really deeply in the culture of Taiwan, but wine is really in the culture of Taiwan, of uh, France. So we're going to try a Bordeaux wine. And you see on the label, it's written Bordeaux. And the name of this wine is Chateau. Chateau is Zhou Zhuang, okay? De l'Hermitage. This is the name of the chateau. In Bordeaux, you have 7,000 chateaux. So this is one of the 7,000 chateaux in Bordeaux. And this is a vintage 2017, which was quite a difficult, a challenging vintage in Bordeaux because they had a big frost in April. So this is a small crop, 2017. It's very concentrated. And uh, it's only 12.5 degrees, which is good. Now sometimes the wine are 13, 13.5, 14 degrees. This is just the right alcohol degree that we like the wine to be very, with a lot of freshness, not too heavy about alcohol, 12.5 degrees. Thank you very much. So when we take the wine, the first thing we look at the color. The best is to have uh, at the back a, a white sheet of paper so we can see the nuance 
we call we say nuance of the color of the wine. We can know from the color it's a very young wine, 2017. Okay, and the second thing we have to do is to move the wine into the glass. Why? To make all the aroma to go out from the wine. So before we drink it, we have to know about the the aroma in the wine. With the wine, we have to do the second things after the color. It's about the aroma of the wine. So we make the wine moving in the glass. Okay, you have to be careful, but don't hesitate to move the wine. You need to breathe anyway. So it's very good to breathe in the, in the glass. So put the, the nose into the glass and we feel a lot of, for this wine, which is a very simple wine, we feel a lot of red fruit, red fruit aroma with at the back, a little bit of spiciness, but many red fruit who bring this aroma. Then we have to drink the wine. So how to drink the wine? Uh, usually we have a special way to do it. I was talking just before about uh, the flavor, the flavor in the mouth. How to get all the flavors in the mouth? This is a question. When we drink wine, we don't put in the mouth and gulu, 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 and drink, no. We have to keep the wine within the mouth. How, how we keep it? We are going to bring some breeze into the mouth. So look how I do it. It's not difficult, very easy. Anybody can do it. And then drink the wine. We put the wine within the mouth for about five to ten seconds and then we breathe a little bit air into the mouth. Why we do that? Because within the mouth we have a second second nose which is inside the, the mouth and this develop all the flavor. For example, all the fruit but all the spicy are just exploding in the mouth. Still here. Acidity, freshness, we don't say very fresh very fresh because this is a vintage. 2017 was a more cold year, so a lot of freshness. But this freshness is very important because it's cleaning all the mouth. I have a very clean mouth, um, very comfortable. And still a little bit of persistence. The final is very nice, okay? And the tanning are not too strong. Soft tanning, it's mainly two grapes who make this wine. It's a, the two very famous red grapes, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. Merlot bringing uh, the more fatty part of the wine and uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon bringing with his tanning all the structure of the wine. So the two combinations make a very nice wine. Okay, so Santé. French people not only eat French food, but we are also very open to all kinds of food because French people like to try. So today we have a very special one. It's come from Pakistan with a samosa. It's absolutely delicious. In France, we don't have so much spicy food. French food is not spicy. It's all about butter, butter and butter. But we don't put so much spice. So it's very interesting to try some spicy food. Thank you, Jane. Okay, I hope it's not too hot. <laughs> Mm. Very nice. Inside. Yeah, I have to go inside. Yeah. Mm. Mm. First thing about the um mm. really nice. Because it's <coughs> it's crispy. I thought it's very crispy, but crispy. But inside it's very melty, very soft. Very easy. So it makes something crispy with something very soft inside. Very good. And it's true, it's not spicy. And salty, little bit, little bit. It's very good. We are going to taste something that the French love. It's called Madeleine. Madeleine, we just try the quiche from Lorraine. Madeleine is also uh, a cake okay, which comes from Lorraine. So can I try this one? Okay. Can you open it for me? Yeah. Thank you, Pierre. It's a traditional one with lemons, but the, the, the Taiwanese taste. 
Okay, this is more butter, of course, with lemon inside. You see, he has a little bit, uh, well, how we say it? It's like a, a, a small, uh, huh? Yeah. The first thing, mm, you feel the butter, and you know that there is some lemon inside. You use real lemon, huh? Yeah. Okay, let me try it. It's perfect. It's really good. Mm. Very good. Really good. The butter, the lemon, the taste, you know, the flavor inside the, the mouth. Again, you know, it stays in the mouth very long, very, very long. And not too much sugar, just good, you know, because we are afraid this one is too sugary. Very good. Ex excellent. Yeah, it's very good. Yes, it's perfect. Mm, I love it. If I could have some coffee, some tea with that, well, that would be perfect. And maybe some champagne, why not? Champagne would be good. Some bubble also is very good with that. It's perfect, really. Congratulations to Pierre. Very good.